standing just a moment for prayer. Let us bow our heads. Each that has a request, let it be known by lifting up your hand to God. Hold your request on your heart now as we pray. Most gracious and holy God, we come into Thy divine presence now by the way of prayer, asking first that You forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And there is many requests tonight, Father. You see their hands and you know the desire of their hearts and what is in there. I'd ask with, long with my hand up to that Thou would give us the desire of our heart and especially the healing of our bodies and the joy of our salvation to be restored to us in such manifold blessings of God that we desire. May it come upon us, Lord. And we pray that you will bless the ministers everywhere, all across the nation and the world. Tomorrow being the Sabbath, and there will be churches and the doors open and the people coming and going and the ministers preaching and praying for the sick. Oh, God, we pray that you'll anoint every one of your servants tomorrow with great messages and hear their prayers for the sick and the needy. Save the lost and get glory to thyself. For we ask it in Jesus' name, thy Son. Amen. And you be seated. <clears throat> it's such a privilege to be back at the tabernacle tonight to continue on the second night, or the, is this the third night of our gathering together. And we are sorry that we do not have the ample seating room to take care of those people who stand for hours and we know their limbs ache. But I do pray with all my heart that the God of heaven will reward you for it. And in in you standing and waiting the way you are, and many of you sitting here sick and needy. Now I just asked Billy Paul, my son, and uh if Gene or any of them or himself give out prayer cards again, and he said they did not because we're anticipating immediately after the service tonight a baptismal service. Down in the basement, I believe, is where the pool is. I remember the last time I was here and they had a baptismal service. I believe they slipped me into some of Brother Lyle's coveralls. He's a little taller than I am, so I had to roll him up at the bottom. <laughs> And they stuck me down in this pool and got the water too hot. <laughs> like they scalded me. <clears throat> but I did that what I thought was right and baptized all that I knew I could baptize. Now, tomorrow I just learned from Brother Moore that I'm to speak after Sunday school tomorrow morning right at the Sunday school service. Now you hear that have churches that you go to, we wouldn't want you to miss your own service. You stand at your post of duty. Always, when your church has services, while, and you're here locally, while, it's your place to stay at your church. See, And uh, if you have no church and would like to come, while we appreciate it. And then when we're praying for the sick, and if you have loved ones, I believe if you just say to pastor... Will it be all right for me to take uh, uh, Mama, Sonny, or somebody over to be prayed for? I'm sure he'd say it's all right to see if you're coming uh, to have someone prayed for. But if you only would just believe it, your pastor has the same authority to pray for the sick as I do, see, or anyone else. You don't have to go to a special meeting to be healed. You don't even have to be prayed for. You just receive him. That's all that's necessary. Last evening, the Holy Spirit did something special. We didn't have any prayer cards, so he just went out through the building. Wasn't that a marvelous uh, uh, thing, that, how he did that? 
And you see, divine healing does not lay in a man anyhow. See? It's in a finished work. Amen. Your faith in a finished work. Amen. And a gift of healing is merely a gift of faith for healing. See? Now, a gift of healing does not have to be even be a pastor. It can be a, a lay member. The laity can have the same thing. See, I remember one time at Meridian, Mississippi, I believe it was, I was holding a meeting. And it was raining. I was there with a man named Brother. He was one of the cooperating ministers, or he was one who was sponsoring it to other churches. It seems to me like his name was either Bigsby or Busby or something like that, down in Mississippi. Busby, that's probably who it was. A football player used to be. And um, it was in an auditorium. And um, there was a st testimony came which was astounding. And the testimony was that uh, I sent Billy down to give out prayer cards so they won't have like an arena. It's a, it's a church, although it was an auditorium, but we still it's church as long as the church is meeting there. That, wherever it is, that's the people are the church, the called out. And... The testimony came in later that there was a little lady sitting on the front seat, just a common little uh, church girl, a little mother, and there was another lady walking back and forth with a baby. And the baby was wrapped up in a blanket and it's raining. The little lady could have no place to sit down. It was just packed and jammed out into the streets and the people standing with umbrellas. And um, so this little lady is sitting there the Holy Spirit spoke to her, just a little member of the body of Christ. And she said, the Holy Spirit said to her, go pray for that baby. And when the lady turned, she was holding a prayer card in her hand. Oh, she said, Father, I cannot go pray for that baby. Brother Branham will pray for that baby tonight. Like that had anything to do with it. But she said, I, I just can't pray for that baby. And as she walked back and forth, it just kept getting on her heart more and more. Go pray for that baby. And finally, she said, uh, perhaps maybe to get it off of my heart, I can just give the lady my seat anyhow because she looks like she's worn out. And um, said it, uh, she said, how do you do, sister? Said, um, you, you look so tired with the baby and I, I'm not, haven't got my baby, so... Would you just take my seat and sit down here? And she said, oh, Thank you, sister. I don't want to take your seat. She said, Yes, you must do it because I, I see that you're tired and worn out. Well, she sat down. She said, Just before you sit down, said, I noticed that you have a prayer card in your hand. Said, Yes, the young man gave it to me a few moments ago as he went out the door. And said, Well, Brother Branham is going to pray for your baby tonight. She said, I hope so. I hope my number's called tonight. And she said, oh, I, I pray that Brother Bram will call your number tonight. And then she said, if I, being a Christian, uh, I just can't get it off my heart, so if you will just excuse me, it would relieve my feelings if you would just let me say a little prayer for your baby. Why, she said, certainly, darling, go ahead and pray for the baby. And she held it out, and the little mother laid her hands up on the little baby, crying, and said, Lord, I, I do this because, uh, to take it off my heart, I pray that you'll heal the baby when your servant, Brother Branham, comes and prays for it. Let it be healed. And she sat down, the other lady with the baby, and this lady goes and climbs way up in the balcony. I believe it had two balconies, and she is in the top balcony. That, about five minutes after that, I come in and after I got through preaching, I said, I'll call prayer cards number 25 to 50 or something like that. You know what we usually do, start along somewhere where the cards are mixed up and just call a group out so that the people won't rally. I got number one or number two or whatever it is. And happened to be that this lady was about the third or fourth one in the line. Well, the little mother up in the building, you know, up in the top, she was so happy. She said, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm so glad for that little mother that was on my heart so for that poor little sick baby. When the little baby got into the prayer line and come up close to where we were standing, where I was standing, I looked at her. Now, we got it on the tape, you know, and it said, uh, that's how I caught it. And it said, uh, a sister said, your baby is, 
is suffering with, I forget what it was, some kind of a disease or trouble. Said, you come from a certain place and you are so-and-so, Mrs. Certain Name. And said, but your baby's already healed. Said, because the Holy Spirit spoke to that little lady standing up there in the balcony. She's already prayed the prayer of faith for your baby. <laughs> the compassion of that mother for the baby would have went far beyond what I'd have had for it, you see. So the gift of healing is... If God ever speaks to your heart to go pray for somebody, you do what God tells you to do. See? see? Always follow the Holy Spirit. Last night, speaking, we believe that we are living in the last days. You believe that, don't you? Just ere the coming of the Lord Jesus. And then, how that... God, in the beginning, when Jesus came on earth, He said, If I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. But if I do the works of my Father, then believe the works. If you couldn't believe Him as a man, why well, believe the works that follows the man? And we found out talking last night that God first revealed Himself in a pillar of fire. Then He revealed Himself in His Son. Now He reveals Himself in the church. See? Same God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. See? In the church. All right. God above us, God with us, God in us. That's what it is. Now, then we find out that when Jesus was on earth, He said, I come from God and I go to God. That's right. Well, when He died, buried, resurrected, and ascended on high... We realize that God, that the Logos, or the pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel through the wilderness, that was Christ. That was the anointing. He said before Abraham was, I am. I like that word, I am, don't you? Not I was or I will be, I am. If you say the days of miracles is past, you make him say, I was. But he didn't say that, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Now, we find out then that when he, after his resurrection and ascension, he returned back to God that he was that led the children of Israel through the wilderness. And he was back a pillar of fire again. Paul, on his road down to Damascus, he was stricken down by a light. And none of the rest of them saw that light. But Paul saw it. And when he was stricken down, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus. He came from God, and he went to God. We find out that in this last day, the Holy Spirit has come back into the Pentecostal move. We have its picture, the same pillar of fire. Now, that same pillar of fire that was then, that was manifested in human flesh, and showed a Messiah sign to the people. Now, we know that the Messiah, as we have studied, the sign of the Messiah, he was the God prophet. That's what all true Israel looked for, was a prophet. Because that God had said, if there be one among you who's spiritual or prophet, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him. And what he says comes to pass, hear him, I'm with him. If it doesn't, then don't hear him. And Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. And we find out that when Jesus came, that he done the sign of the prophet before a man named, uh, let's say, Simon Peter. His name was Simon then. And he said... As soon as he walked up to him, he said, Your name's Simon. You shall be called Peter. Your father was Jonas. Oh, that was perfectly that prophet. And Nathaniel saw it, and or Philip saw it, and run told Nathaniel, Come see who we've seen, or who we found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And he said, Could there be anything good come? He said, Come find out. No doubt he told him the story about that as he crossed over. Then Nathaniel, being a staunch Hebrew and a believer, as soon as he walked into the prayer line or the audience, wherever it was, well, we find out that Jesus said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there's no guile. He said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. 
That did it. He said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. Now there's three races of people on earth. If you believe the Bible, there's only three races. Ham, Sham, and Japheth's people. Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Peter with the keys of Pentecost opened it to the Jews. Philip went out and preached and baptized them down in Samaria. But Peter came down, laid hands on them. They received the Holy Ghost. And the house of Cornelius. Then he had the keys that opened it to these three people. Now there's two races of people looking for a Messiah to come. The Samaritan and the Jew. He only comes to those who look for him. Is that right? The Son of Righteous, those who look for him will appear in the, in the end time, healing in his wings. Now, notice, now when he made himself known to the Jews by his Messiah sign, he must pass by Samaria, had need, though he was going to Jericho. And the woman come out, we know the story, how he contacted her spirit first and began to talk to her and said, uh, bring me a drink. And the conversation, this segregation, she says, not customary. And after a while, he found what her trouble was. He said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I have no husband. He, she said, thou hast said well. He said that to her. For you've had five husbands. The one you're living with now is not your husband, so you did well. She said, sir, watch the difference between her and them priests, rabbis. They said, he's Beelzebub when he did that. And they said, he said, that's unforgivable to call the Spirit of God an unclean thing. It's blasphemy. See? But this woman knowed more about the ministry than lots of preachers know today. That's, although we think she was a harlot. But she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll show these things. That she was taught. She knew what she's looking for. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. Upon this, she left her water pot and ran into the city and said, Come see a man who's told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Isn't that what the Messiah is supposed to do? Yes. And the man believed Jesus because of the saying of the woman that Jesus was the Messiah because he showed the Messiah sign. Now, not one time in Scriptures did he ever do it to the Gentiles. No. But he said... As it was in the days of Noah, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. And in the days of Lot, now we tuck it, notice. In the days of Lot, there was three classes of people. There always is. Three classes. Everything's in a trinity, a trinity but one. Notice. There was, in the days of Lot, there was the unbeliever, the Sodomites. There was Lot, the lukewarm church, and his family. There was Abraham, the called out, setting out in the desert. By choice, not because he had to, but by choice, he tucked away with the Lord's despised few. When the angels came down and spoke to him, they were, I believe it was a theophany, I truly do, because it was God. Two of them, a modern Billy Graham and so forth, went down into Sodom and preached to the Sodomites and to the lukewarm church. And they never done any miracles, only blinded them. And preaching the gospel blinds the unbeliever, we know that. Preaching of the word blinds him that believeth not. But what's the sign that this angel done out there to the elect church? He had his back turned to the tent and was a stranger. And he said, Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? Is that right? Told him he was married and his wife's name was Sarah. A stranger. And watch the Bible specifically says, she's in the tent behind you. Behind the man. God manifested in flesh. This man was. Abraham called him Elohim, the Almighty. See what he's going to do in the last days? In the tent behind you. What kind of a mind reading or mental telepathy is that? And he said, I am going to visit you. Now remember, I, I was God that made the promise. This same man said, I, and I is a personal pronoun. All right. I will visit you according to the time of life. And Sarah laughed within herself in the tent. You know. And the angel said, Why did Sarah laugh behind him? Sarah denied it. God would have struck her right there, but he couldn't because she was part of Abraham. Our sins would ruin us if we wasn't a part of Christ. 
You can't strike the church because we're Christ. See, Sarah and Abraham are one. Christ and His church is one. Our sins are covered by His blood, by His faith. Not ours, we're trusting in His finished works. Now remember, Jesus said, As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Otherwise, a visitation of the same thing. Now, if God showed His sign at the end of the Jews and at the end of the Samaritan dispensation and let the Gentiles get in just on common theology, He did wrong. He's infinite. His first decision how to do anything always remains the same. That's where we have faith in His Word because what He says, He can't change it. I can change mine because I'm finite. He's infinite and cannot change His Word. Therefore, when God says anything, lay your soul on it because it's true. That's the only way you can ever have faith is believe what He said. That's the only way you can please Him is to believe what He said. And did you notice... Right now, at the last hour, when we brought in word at this last great conference, where Khrushchev, with five nations of the East, Eisenhower, the leader, five nations of the West represented, and the ten toes of the image, they would not mix, and Khrushchev took off his shoe and beat it. Spiritual mind had picked that up right quick, see, on the desk. See, they will not mix. Next thing is the coming of the stone that shoot out of the mountain without hands that will roll into the Gentile kingdom. It will be finished. Just before that time, he's going to send this angel to what church? To Sodom? No. To the lukewarm? No. He sent it to the elected, called out church. What kind of a sign did he show? The same thing that he did here last night. God, Elohim, manifested in the person of the Holy Ghost in his church. Oh, my. Why, it ought to send us a million miles in the sky with shouts and praises of his glory. These things was happening just before, not the water fell. He gave the morals of the people, which would be. But in the Sodom, you remember, he left that alone. That's spiritual interpretation. We're at the end time, friends. Think of that tonight. And if sin hangs on your life, think of it. Tomorrow, if God is willing, I'll send the boys over or tell from right here now to give out the prayer cards. Tomorrow evening, about 6 o'clock, I think. Is that about right, Brother Moore? About 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Now, while we're here tonight, pray. Who knows what God will do? We don't know. He's God. And if God will do one thing supernatural to prove that He's here, infallible proof, then the only thing you have to do is say, Yes, Lord, I believe it. South Africa, where tens of thousands times thousands were seated. One sign... And 25,000 in wheelchairs, cots, and stretches. Seven big van loads just picked up from one time. 30,000 raw heathens broke their idols on the ground and come to Jesus Christ. Oh, my. We're so indocumented with everything and so frustrated and afraid. Don't be afraid. Amen. The other night I preached on that, Be not afraid, it's I. The only thing that could help them, they were dying, drowning. Satan is going to take them. And they thought he was a spook, a spirit. The only thing that could help them. And that's the way it is today. The only thing that can deliver you from cancer. The only thing that can deliver you from heart trouble. Medicine has no remedies for that. The only thing that can help you is the thing that you're afraid of. Afraid it's a spirit of some sort. It is a spirit. A Holy Spirit. Christ made manifest in our lives. Believe Him now. Now, tomorrow night, we pray for the sick, and tomorrow morning, if the Lord willing, if I'm to speak, now this is will of the Lord, I want to speak on the subject after Sunday school, that wasn't so from the beginning. Now, let us turn tonight to the book of Jeremiah, and I'll just speak to you just a short time on, the, on a subject. Let's turn to Jeremiah and begin with the 8th chapter 
and the twentieth verse, and read the twenty-second inclusive. And listen close to the reading. My words will fail. God's words cannot fail. I'm a man. My words fail. God's cannot. They must be. The 20th verse, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment has took hold on me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why? Then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? And if I should call it a text, I would like to take them little three word, three lettered word rather. Why? Why? Let's pray once more, can we, just before we approach them. Father, Thou art the stream of all our comfort. As blind Fanny Crosby said once, more than life to me. And we're sitting here tonight in this life tabernacle, a tabernacle that bears the name of life. Not only does the name on the outside life tabernacle, but Lord the people on the inside, we have eternal life because we believe on Thee. For it is so written in the Word, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into the judgment but pass from death unto life. How we love these words because they are life to us. Your Word is life. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And it is so graciously written again in the book of Hebrews by Paul, we believe, the fourth chapter, that the Word of God, which is Christ, sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting to this asunder, even to the mire of the bone, and, conjunction, a discerner of the thoughts of the mind. That the Word, the Word that is Spirit, the Holy Spirit, can discern the thoughts that's in our mind. How we thank Thee for this, Lord. The Holy Spirit with His power to heal the sick and to set the captive free, and to give deliverance to all who are in bondage. We pray tonight, Lord, that you'll liberate every soul from bondage. Take the man or the woman that belongs to church and doesn't know you as their personal Savior. May they receive you tonight as their Savior. Go back to their church tomorrow morning and take hold of their pastor's hands and say, Pastor... I've been a member here for so many years or months or whatever the case may be. But last night I truly surrendered my heart. I now am a Christian. Jesus is my Savior. I found Him sweet and dear to my soul. I've passed from death unto life. My whole motive and my objectives are different now. I love Him and I will be a better member of this church than I ever was before. Grant it, Lord. May many be filled with the Holy Spirit, the sick healed. God receive glory. Help us now as we meditate on the great word, question rather, why? For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, why? That's a question. And there's no one has a better right to ask it than God. 
And he asked it in the text tonight. If God makes a way of escape for his people, to escape a horrible thing or sickness or death or the eternal death, and then the people fail to receive that, God asked, why? Why didn't you do it? Now, that's going to be a great thing on the day of judgment when God's going to ask we tonight that's assembled here that will not accept Him as our Savior and be filled with His Spirit, why didn't you do it? Why? And we're going to have to give an answer to that. Just remember, we're going to answer for every word that God has written. Why didn't you? Why? And you will have no excuses at that day. We'll have to stand before God. Now, just like the king of Israel, when he was the son of Ahab and Jezebel, he lived in, up in Samaria. He was a wicked man. He is like his papa or his mother. He worshipped his mother's god, Balaam. And one day while he was walking out on the porch, he fell through the lattice and hurt himself. He got sick. And then he called two of his footmen, soldiers, and sent them over to Akron and asked to consult the prophets of Baal, or Beelzebub, rather, was he going to get well or not? But you know, you can't hide anything from God. Way down in the wilderness somewhere was a, an old preacher that knowed God. His name was Elijah. God reveals his secrets to his servants. And the Holy Spirit came to Elijah and said, Go up and stand in the way and stop him. And Elijah took off up the hill on the road that passed over the mountain to the other city. And he stopped the soldiers in the road and said, Go tell this king that he's not coming off of that bed. Why? Why would he send over to ask Beelzebub about anything. Is it because there is no God in Israel? Is it because there is no prophet down here? Is it because God has not made Himself known in Israel? Is it because God has not provided a prophet to consult these things by? Then why would He send over there? He wanted to know why. And when the man returned back and brought the message, the king said, What sort of a man was this? He said he was hairy and had a piece of sheepskin, a leather wrapped around his loins. And the king knew that that was Elijah, the prophet who had the word of the Lord. It wasn't because there was no God in Israel. It wasn't because God didn't have a prophet for them to consult. But it was the king's own stubborn ways. He just didn't like Elijah. He didn't like him because Elijah would always correct him in his sins. And a prophet of God is always truthful with the Bible. Regardless of what it is, he's got God's Word and he lays right with it. And it'll stir up a man. And if the man is honest and sincerely, he'll want to make that thing right. But if he doesn't, then he turns against the messenger. Tries to drown the voice. Some time ago I read an article in a newspaper in Phoenix. And the paper said that there's a prospector killed because he had got some money and was on his road in. And a, 
A foul man was following him and his dog raised up the bark. And the man was all daydreaming what he was going to do with the money when he got in and he got his gun and went to the door and shot the dog. A little later on, the outlaw came in and killed a prospector and took his money. Many years ago, and it was confessed by the man before he died. What did the prospector do? He was so wrapped up in what he was going to do with his money till he took his gun and still the voice that was trying to warn him. Amen. That's the way men and women are doing today. They're going out, maybe join church to find out if they just don't sue them a little bit and try to stop the voice of God that's trying to warn you of an oncoming judgment. Amen. Trying to say, well, it's fanaticism or it's something else. Just won't sit still long enough to listen. No, it isn't because we haven't got a God. It isn't because He hasn't got salvation for us. It's because that we don't want to listen to Him. Amen. Just like a man that goes, that'll die and with his disease on the doctor's doorstep. The doctor has a remedy to give the man for his disease. And he can help him with his medicine. But the man will not listen to it. He just refuses to take the doctor's medicine. Well, the man could be so close to the doctor till he'd sit on his doorstep and die. Die right on his office step. Or live door neighbors to him. And die with the disease that the medicine is laying in the doctor's office to cure him with. Now, it isn't the doctor's fault. It isn't because there's no medicine there. It's because the man refuses to take the remedy. That's right. He dies because he refuses to take the remedy that the doctor has for his disease. So is it in the church today. Men and women die in the pews in sin. Because they refuse the remedy. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is a physician there. But people refuse to take the remedy. They don't want it. It's a dangerous thing to refuse a doctor's medicine. If you've got scarlet fever or pneumonia or whatever it is and and the doctor gives you the medicine and you just pour it out, that's a dangerous thing. That's right. Because you might die. But how much more dangerous is it to pour out the bomb of God? God's remedy. Make fun of it and call it fanaticism. Blaspheme the Holy Ghost. There will be no excuses when you're asked why. Why? It's a dangerous thing to do that. Dangerous to neglect your body. Well, with the medicine, if the doctor's got it for your ailment, more dangerous to neglect the balm for your soul because God's got it. Now, you can't lay it on and say, well, it's a doctor's fault. No, they haven't got the medicine. They got it. You can't say it isn't God's fault. It's your fault if you don't get it. It's your failure. And an invitation to whosoever will. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian. Pentecost is not an organization. I know they try to organize it, but you can't. Pentecost is an experience that goes to Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Whosoever will, let him come. Black, white, yellow, brown, whoever he is. It's God's remedy. It's his bomb for sin. There is a bomb in Gilead. Someday we're going to ask why we didn't take it. Now, sometimes in taking medicine, sometimes that medicine's not, it's good. The Bible says it is. Mary Hart doeth good like medicine. Notice. But sometimes medicine 
won't always work the same on the person. And you have to take a chance on that. I was amazed here in Africa, if there might be a doctor near, how that God takes care of His people. A native told me that when they got a sore that wouldn't heal up, they would go out under an old wild orange tree and, and get an orange that was covered all over with mold and rub that mold in that sore. Penicillin. They noted hundreds of years ago and we just found it out recently. <laughs> then we think they're dumb. God takes care of His own. If we spend more time praying, there'd be more things done. Now we notice that sometimes we can give a patient penicillin for pneumonia. It'll kill the germ. And then sometimes we give it to another and it kills the patient. You can't be too sure about it. I was talking one time, making an expression how that medicine did not heal. Medicine's only an aid to nature. When I was interviewed at Mayo's, that's what they told me. Cut your hand, medicine don't heal your hand. You put medicine on it, keep it clean while God heals it. God builds tissue. Medicine doesn't build tissue. If I broke my arm and said, Doctor, you're a healer, heal my arm. You'd say, Mr. Brandon, you need mental healing. Well, that's right. The doctor can set my arm. That's what he does. He studies it, how to put it together. But God has to heal it. That's right. Because he furnishes the calcium and the life that knits that bone together. God heals it. So Psalms 103.3 said, I'm the Lord, heals all thy diseases. That's correct. It's God. God heals every. There never was medicine healed. Any medicine healer will cut my hand, he'll cut my coat. As I've often said. You say medicine wasn't made for your coat, it's made for your hand. Let me cut my hand and die right here then. You sew my hand up and take me down to the morgue and, and embalm my body with the fluid to look natural for 50 years and give me a shot of penicillin every day and put salve on it. And 50 years from now, if I, my body was still there, the cut would be there too. But I don't heal my body. You say life's gone out of it. Then what you heal? Medicine or life? Life. Tell me what life is and I'll tell you who God is. God is life. Eternal life to help this line. Someone said, then what about penicillin? Shoot penicillin into you. I said, well, penicillin is just like rat poison. You got a house full of rats eating holes in the house. You put out some rat poison, kills the rats. It doesn't patch the holes. <laughs> penicillin kills the germ, but God has to heal the cells that's been damaged by it. So God is the healer. It's correct. Some medicines will work on some people where it will kill the next one. You can't be too sure about it. But I want to say one thing. God's bomb for sin heals everyone. Whosoever will. There's, whether he's what nature is or no matter who it is. God's bomb is the cure for sin. The devil cure. I love that old song you say, uh, be for sin a double cure. I love that. Now, God's bomb, there's no, you don't have to worry about that. That'll take care of itself. I've often wondered, and I've got many fine doctor friends, and they study the medical journals and so forth, and sometimes I get one to study. I like to think how God's doing in the medical pro- medical profession. You know how they find medicine? Well, science puts different chemicals together and tries it out, and after a while they got a farmer built up. And that farmer, they, they shoot it into a guinea pig. The guinea pig survives it to try you around. <laughs> Let's see how it works on you. They try it on a guinea pig. And if it works the guinea pig all right, then they'll try it on a human. Therefore, all humans are not like guinea pigs. Therefore, so that kills some, makes others well. I've heard it said that in the journal that that uh, heart trouble was number one killer in the nation. Not to be different, but not to disagree with those loyal men. 
But I'd say this, I differ in this much. Heart trouble is not the number one killer. Sin killer is the number one killer. Sin! That's what kills soul and body. Sin! Number one killer. And you've heard the old expression, I just can't keep from sinning. No one can keep from it. I've just got to smoke. I've just got to take a drink now and then. I've got to do these things. You know why it is? Because they don't take God's remedy as inoculation from it. God's got a bomb that inoculates you. That's right. They're afraid of it. They're afraid they'll do something unusual. Afraid they'll get out of the regular routine. Afraid the church won't agree with what they're doing. Afraid their neighbors won't agree. Why do you care about your neighbors as long as God agrees? As long as your experience agrees with God's Word, what about it? Stay with that. Oh, it's the new birth. They're afraid of that. The new birth is like any other birth. It's a mess. I don't care what kind of a birth it is. It's a mess. If it's in a pig pen or if it's in a barnyard or in a pink decorated hospital room, it's a mess. So is a new birth a mess. It'll make you do things you didn't think you'd ever do. But out of that mess comes life. Hallelujah. That's it. Out of the mess comes life. Life comes out of a mess. Life comes out of death. Except the corn or wheat fall in the ground and die, it abides alone. But as long as it dies and rots, then out of that rotten mess comes forth life. Until a man or a woman is ready to die to their cells, die out to their creeds, die out to their own ideas, and out of that rotten mess bring forth a new birth of glories and shouts and praises of God. That makes him act different. Changes his nature. Changes his life. Changes his motives and changes his objectives. But they're afraid of it. Afraid to make them cry and ruin the makeup on their face, the women. Afraid to spoil the appetite of the cigar for the man. See? They're afraid of it. They don't want it. Afraid somebody to call them holy roller or, or fanatic. If they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call them of his disciples? Sure. If they didn't call me that, I'd get down and pray and say, Lord, what's the matter with me? The world knows its own. But you are bought with a price. You are a different people. A holy people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. You are a kingdom. Some time ago, I was going my wife to the grocery, and we found a surprise. We hadn't seen it in so long. Excuse me, sisters. There was a lady with a dress on. Hadn't seen it so long. I said, "What do you know? I, if I had a camera, I'd take a picture. I ought to go shake her hand." And she said, "Billy, I want to ask you something." Them women, some of them sing in choirs. They go to churches. And they say it's all right. I said, but the Bible said that a woman who put on a garment pertains to a man. It's abomination in the sight of God. Correct what he said. She said, well, why is it we do that and we believe that we Pentecostals? I said, because we are not of their race. We're not in their kingdom. We are a different kingdom. Oh, she said, we are Americans, aren't we? I said, no. I said, we live in America, that's true. But we've been born. When I went into Finland, the brothers, the whole going to go down and take a sonda, one of the Finnish baths. I felt kind of funny. I didn't do it. Dr. Munyan said, come on, Brother Branham, no soap in them time right after the war. I said, I said, thank you. I don't believe I want to do it. I don't know why. Brother Jack laughing because he was there. Well, the brother and all went up there and went in a room, and I don't know why I didn't want to, but I just sat out there. Here come a little blonde-headed woman along with a big bunch of towels, going right in that room where those men was undressed. I said, hey, 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 stop, 
She looked around and waved at me and walked on in. Here come about a dozen more taking those men out there and giving them a bath. After the Zohar, I said, Dr. Munyonen, that isn't right. I said, no more than your American nurses do. They're trained from babyhood to be scrub women. I said, anyhow, it's not right. It isn't right. God put clothes on people and separated them from that. It's not right. We go into Germany, we find people with a German spirit. Finland, we find people with a Finnish spirit. To my surprise, at San Angelo, in Rome, as low as that goes, there was a sign to the American women to please put on clothes in honor of the dead. Used to be France led the fashions we do now. They come over here to find out how these women are dressing. They're far beyond them. Oh, it's a shame. It's a disgrace. It's not because the Word hasn't been preached. God's got somebody that won't compromise with sin. There's a doctor's and there's bomb. You receive the Holy Ghost, you'll dress different, you'll act different, you'll be different, you'll live different. Because you refuse the remedy. That's all. You refuse the remedy. Afraid of the new birth. The wife said, well, what kind of a kingdom do we belong to? I said, each man in his own domain, in his kingdom. He acts that way. The people out there, Germans act like Germans. Swiss act like Swiss. French act like French. And Americans act like Americans. I said, aren't we Americans? I said, potentially, yes. We live here. But when we're born from above, we have a spirit that comes from a holy place where people are holy and a holy God, a holy Savior. And you are a royal priesthood, a holy people. You are bought with a price. You're sure you're, a, you're an alien. I wish I could sing this old song. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The lifeboat soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Oh, I love that. Pilgrims, Abraham and Isaac, Jacob, were seeking a city to come. Confessing that they were pilgrims and strangers, but they were looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. They had tasted of the heavenlies. And a man that's been born of the Holy Spirit is no more of this world. He's seeking a city and a kingdom where holiness reigns. For God lives seeking a city to come freed of the new birth it only makes you a different person and if you're not a different person then you're not converted you might be converted into a denomination you might be converted into a different atmosphere or something but when you're converted to God then you live holy I believe in holiness I can prove to you by the Bible that I don't care what you do. You cannot offer God a gift. Amen. With unholy hands, He won't receive it. Amen. The gifts in the Old Testament had to be sanctified. At the altar, the priest, before he could go in and offer it, had to be anointed Amen. and sanctified or the gift was refused. Amen. God will not accept the gift by unholy hands. That's right. It must come through holy hands or you won't accept it. Afraid of the new birth. What makes it? Because it's kind of messy to them. But it brings forth new life. I'm so glad. You know, there was a time when there wasn't any toxin on the earth for smallpox. Many died with smallpox because there was no toxin. Diphtheria. No toxin. But now you can get inoculated from that. When an epidemic breaks out in the city, quickly you go down and get a smallpox vaccination or a diphtheria shot 
they got toxin. I'm thankful for that. I'm glad of that. I'm glad we got it. And the salt vaccine for little children. I thank the Lord for that. Pray that He'll give us more and more. I believe we just warm up to God. They sang sure for us. It was made out of the earth, you know. If we just warm up to Him and pray to Him and quit our wickedness and things, all these things would be found. That's right. But for you who believe, He's got a remedy beyond that. Certainly He has. Now, it's all made, ready for you. There was a time when the toxin, there wasn't any, and many people died from the diseases. But now you can be inoculated. There was a time when God's bomb wasn't perfect because it was drawn from the veins of animals. And it only covered sin. It didn't divorce it. But there's no excuse now. God one day made a toxin. I'm going to say something. He didn't try it out with a guinea pig either. He gave it to his son. He inoculated him at the Jordan when the Holy Ghost came down upon him. Every eye watched him as he lived. He lived the life of God. He looked like God. He acted like God. He lived like God. He prayed like God. He healed like God. He raised the dead like God. He was God. God was he was he was inoculated from the things of the world. And they watched him. In the hour of his death, the inoculation held. When they know he was that prophet, and a Roman soldier put a rag around his head and closed his eyes and took a stick and hit him on the head and said, Now, if you be a prophet, tell us who hit you and we'll believe you. The inoculation hell. He don't mind the devil. I do what the Father shows me. I only do what the Father shows me to do. Prove that the inoculation hell. When then they reached over and got his face and jerked out big handfuls of beard hawked the big drunken spit and put it in his face. The inoculation helped. When his own children cried for his blood, the inoculation helped. What did he say? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. When he was riled up on, he riled not back. The inoculation helped. All hell was looking to see if that would hold. He was making a way for you and I. Making an example. When he died at the cross, the inoculation helped. And on Easter morning, hallelujah, it proved it was so. The inoculation, death couldn't hold it. Life and death can't exist in the same place. He rose up on the third day. The inoculation helped. As he ascended on high, people began to long. They wanted the inoculation. For there finally, there had been a serum. There had been a serum given by God that would raise up the dead from the grave. And they wanted inoculation. When I first heard of it, I wanted it too. I'm so glad that we still have plenty of it. Inoculation from sin. And when all oh, there's 120 become patients right away, for they've seen it would hold in temptation. I could speak to my father and straightway he'd send me 20 legions of angels. He could do it. But you know, like I preached here to you one time, the lamb and the dove, you remember. The dove only has, he led the lamb. The lamb can't lead himself. The dove led him. And the lamb has one thing that's wool. But he forfeits that willfully. Only thing he's got. People say, 
A lot of times women say to me, Brother Bram, that's my, my, my American privilege. If I want to dress the way I want to dress. That's right. Man say, if I want to take a sociable drink, they sell it out there. There's no law against it. That's my American privilege. That's right. But as a Christian, you will forfeit your American rights. If you're a lamb, if you're a goat, you won't. But if you're a lamb, you'll forfeit your rights. Because you're of another kingdom. The dove is leading you. They've seen it held in the hour of temptation. It held in the hour of death. And when he's in the grave, three days and nights, inoculation held. On Easter morning, an angel rolled the stone away and the Son of God rose again. And he ascended on high. He said, now if you all want to be inoculated, go up there and wait in the city of Jerusalem. I'll send the serum right back from headquarters. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, that great inoculation. What would you give for it? It's in the doctor's office tonight. If you go down and say, Doctor, give me this shot. And after I live an ordinary life and die and all that. First thing you know, one morning go to raise back again to a new life and never die out of that one. Give me a shot, Doc. Wouldn't it be worth some money? But it's free tonight. You don't have to buy it. It's already paid for. There's bomb in Gilead. Excuse me, I get beside myself. When I think about it, these people, when they become inoculated, they act funny. Usually they do when something happens substantially. Makes them become funny when they take this shot. Strange thing, if it was, they all got drunk, looked like, or they thought they were drunk. They were dancing and acting like a bunch of drunk people. And the, and the people that was inoculated said, these men are full of new wine. Man and women, listen, my Catholic friend, the Virgin Mary was in there. And if the Virgin Mary, the, the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, had to go up to Pentecost and get so full of the inoculation of God's Spirit till she acted like a drunk woman, how are you going to get any, anything less than that? Just think that over. How are you going to make it? No matter what church you belong to, she belonged to a holy church too. But she had to get inoculated. That's the only thing would raise up. It had to come life in. She became inoculated. Now, when they got this inoculation, they went out into the streets and began to, to act real strange. Dancing, screaming, running around. People no doubt laughed and said, they look like they're having a fit. But they were branded. I remember when I used to ride on the range. Out in Colorado, we had... Cattle, Hereford Association grazed the, the Troubles River Valley. Every spring we'd have to bring, brand these calves. And when we went to branding calves, sometimes we'd get a pretty good sized cow before a yearling, before he'd get branded. Maybe had to throw him down, take this hot branding iron, stick on him. The fur would burn and oh my. When he turned him loose, he had a running fit. But brother, he was yours. <laughs> He was branded. It hurt a little bit, but we know where he belonged after that. It might hurt your pride and burn a little your ecclesiastical fur off, but you'll know where you belong from then on. Inoculation. Certainly. They was inoculated. They were doing something. They began to speak with other tongues. Those men said, Now, what meaneth all of this? Well, we hear them faithful are all Galileans. And why do we hear them speaking in our own tongue wherein we were born? That must be the wonderful works of God. And then there was a little fellow stood up on a stump there and began to preach to them. They had plenty of... They said, Can we get this inoculation? We'd like to have this. What can we do to, to be inoculated? Now, the new serum had just been poured out. So they had plenty of bomb, and they had a doctor there. His name was Dr. Simon Peter. That ought to make some of you clergymen feel real good. Dr. Simon Peter. He spoke for the serum. They said, what can we do to be inoculated? He said, I'll write you a prescription. He said, repent, everyone, of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall be inoculated. <laughs> That's right. 
He said, besides all that, I'm going to make this a, a lifelong sub, a prescription. This prescription can't be full with no more. Don't nobody else try to write one like it. Take this prescription because it's for you and to your children and to them as far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The same prescription is good for them. That's the inoculation. If a doctor goes and writes a prescription, a real good doctor, he knows just how much of certain things to put in there. One has to upset the other one. If it don't, if you go to putting some more in or adding something to it or taking some away from it, you'll kill your patient. Some quack druggist adds something to it or takes something away from it might kill the patient. That's what's the matter with our church move today. The reason we've got so many old dead churches. They tried to fool with that prescription. It's God's prescription. There is a bomb in Gilead and there's a physician there. Don't fool with the prescription. Shake somebody's hands and take them into fellowship. That don't take the repentance. No, sir. Sprinkle somebody with a salt shake full of water. Don't take the place of water baptism. Quit fooling with the prescription. There is a bomb in Gilead. And there is a physician there. Now what are you waiting on? Why are you going to turn the prescription down? The doctors here, the Holy Spirit. He was the one who wrote the prescription. They used it all through the Testament, on down for 300 years or more unto the Nicene Council. Then they begin to get man into it and begin to meddle here and sprinkle and pour and all other kind of forms and things. But back to the original prescription. There's the prescription. The reason people are so full of sin, they don't take God's prescription. They join churches instead of being born into it. Try to take something else besides Acts 2.38. That's God's prescription. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Yes, there's bomb in Gilead. Yes, there's physicians there. Plenty of them. Sure. Tell you the truth about it. Then why is the daughter of my people, the daughter, the little church on this day, the, the prophecy goes to this time, why is the daughter of my people then, the daughter of my people, which is back at the beginning, who used this same prescription, why is the daughter of my people still sick? Why? Is there nobody to tell you the truth? Sure. Is there no bomb there? Still the Holy Ghost? This hundred sitting right here tonight can prove the Holy Ghost is right. Sure there is. Then, brother, if you haven't been inoculated from sin yet, take God's prescription. And there is a bomb in Gilead, and there's a physician there, and there's a tank of water downstairs, and an altar here. Let's bow our heads. Lord, You've been God of old, your God and change not. If you ever write a prescription, you great physician, it cannot be changed. We remember the prescription that you wrote and said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Speak with new tongues, take up serpents, or drink deadly things will not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Your last words to your church. Immediately after that, you spoke through the Apostle Peter in the form of the Holy Spirit when it had just been first poured out. I called him a doctor tonight, Lord, just to make a, a point. It was the Holy Spirit, the inspiration, the knowledge that the Holy Spirit had wrote the farmer. And we thank thee for this. There's people here, and perhaps in our audience, that's never accepted this formula. They might belong to church or something, but as far as receiving the Holy Spirit and being inoculated, a spirit in there that takes your old nature out, puts the new nature in. 
They've never did that yet. I pray thee, Father, that tonight that they will receive it. That the sinners will come to you and will receive you as their personal Savior. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Grant, Lord, that those who goes into the water, not one of them will go into the water tonight without coming out with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. May this be a memorial night that will be remembered a long time. Because of your presence and you, the great doctor, here to perform every thing that you promise, giving life to those who are dying, healing sickness to those who are beloved medical doctors cannot touch heart cancer, blind, deaf, dumb, paralyzed, something that you've not put into their hearts that are in their minds, what to take away that. Maybe there is nothing left but just the blood. But we know, Lord, that that inoculation there cures all. We thank Thee for it, Father. We pray now that You'll get glory out of the service. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I love him fashion gospel you scour yeah feel clean let's just bow our heads reverently now let's sing it slowly and softly now with a worship in our hearts to God I I wonder with her heads bowed as the music sweetly plays it on the girls if they will would there be in divine presence some sinner that would say I want to love him brother Branham truly I do I've always wanted to I wish I had the courage tonight to receive him as my personal savior would you just raise your head or hand rather while nobody's looking Way up in the balcony, way back in there. I believe I see some colored people back in there. Way upstairs. Raise up your hand. I, God bless you. God bless you. Mm-hmm. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. That's, mm-hmm. Oh, Brother Branham, if I could just be sure that Jesus is here. I believe you told the truth. I believe he did say that. 
The works that I do shall you do also. You tell us that we're, we're at the end of the road. Back over here in the wing to my right. Raise up your hands. That, God bless you. God bless you. That's right. Way back in there. That's good. I believe, Brother Branham, that it's true. Yet I have never had just anything I could put my hands on to say it's supernatural. I've heard great messages on the Bible. But I never did see the Holy Spirit come and do anything. And especially when you were talking tonight that that was the Messiah. And he showed a Messiah sign. And you said he showed it to this generation. And he promised he would do it like it was just at the days before the burning of the earth in Sodom. He would show that same sign. He'd work in human flesh and do that same thing just before the burning of the earth. If I could see him, something I could lay my hands on to know that hey, Christ is right here. I'd receive him as my personal Savior. Would there be another that hasn't raised her hands? Raise your hands. I can't see too good in the balcony way up there. It seems like, hey, I see the hands of colored people. God bless you up there. Yes. Down on the lower floors here, anywhere. Stand in the galleys back there, back in the... Round back in a wing somewhere. Anywhere. God bless you here, brother. God bless you. God bless you, little man. Bless you. Our Heavenly Father, now that the time has come that I have spoke of you, telling that you're the great physician and you have the inoculating power to do things, that you are not dead, that you died truly, but you rose up again the third day, and you're alive forevermore. And you commanded or commissioned your church to go into all the world and preach the gospels to every creature that would believe. And he that did believe and was baptized would be saved. And you said, the works that I do shall you also. And the way that you made yourself known to the Jews and to the Samaritans. Now, Lord, the Gentile church has had 2,000 years of theology. They've never seen that until this age. The prophet said, it'll be light in the evening. We know that the sun rises geographically in the east and sets in the west. The same sun that rises in the east is the same sun that sets in the west. The prophet said there would be a day that would not be day nor night, a dismal day. Just enough light to join church and a few things like that. But in the evening time, the evening lights would shine. You rose on the eastern people to the Jews and Samaritans. Shine that light upon them. Now we've had a, this long 2,000 years, a day of dismal wars and troubles. But the evening lights has begun to shine. The same Son of God with His same power, showing His same signs just as the sun is going down at the western horizon. We cannot go no farther, Lord. We're at the west coast. He'd be back east again. Lord, shine on us tonight. Show us thy presence. If it pleases thee, I ask that you will grant that the messenger of the covenant that met Abraham there before the burning of Sodom, when he had his back turned to the tent, and the spirit that was within him, who Abraham recognized to be God Almighty, the great El Elo Elohim, the self-existing one, manifested in a body of flesh that eat a cow's calf, eat butter and milk and cornbread, and then vanished right in the sight of Abraham. Elohim. When he was manifested in flesh by a virgin birth, promised that in the last days this sign would happen just before his return to the Gentiles. Here we are, Lord. You keep your word. I've told this people that they, are, they were saved when Jesus died for them. They were healed when Jesus died for them. Confirm your word. If you'll just do it tonight, Lord, the people will realize that you're here. You could not heal them because you've already done it. It remains their faith to manifest it. 
Will you come tonight, Lord, and prove your presence if we, your humble servants, has found grace in your sight? If thou would anoint me, your servant, Lord, you'd have to anoint your audience, too, because it has to be through both. For we realize that when you were here on earth, when you went to your own people, it said many mighty works he could not do because of their unbelief. So is it tonight. Here, Father, we commit ourselves to Thee and humbly wait that You'll manifest Your grace and love to us. Then we'll ask the sinners to come forward to receive the prescription. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Before God, the holy angels... I say I will go forward in spirit to challenge the enemy that is unseen among us. That is sickness, diseases. They are devils, like cancer. Cancer is a medical word. I think crab, you know, uh, the sea animal. Legs, but he has a life. A cancer is a cell, a wild cell, as I understand it. I'm not a doctor. But a, a multiplication of cells. So are you a multiplication of cells. Your life comes through holy wedlock by the will of God, but where did this cancer come from? To take your life. He's a devil. Jesus said, When the deaf and dumb spirit went out of a man, Deaf and dumb spirit. He could speak. See? Spirit. That poor brother might have went to a good doctor and he looked him over. He said, yes, sir, I find it. You got a dead nerve in your ear. And that's what makes you deaf. Now, why wasn't he dead nerved all over? See, it's like an unseen force gripping him. Something the doctor can work on. He can see with his, with his hands. He's got two senses that he works with. That's what he can see with his eyes, what he can feel with his hands. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear is the five senses of the body. Now, if he could see it, he could work on it. But see, this thing has got that nerve killed. He can't see it like a transparent band or something. Now, it's a deaf spirit. Take that off of there. Nature will actually revolve itself. Just like a stalk of corn, this flower growing up. If it's laid on a clod and twisted over, just remove the clod. It'll grow back right. You have to have... Uh, you have to find causes before you find cures. If you go into a doctor's office and tell him I'm sick at my stomach and he gives you some aspirin and sends you home, he's either too busy to fool with you or don't care. A good doctor will take you in, it costs you a little more, but he'll examine you till he finds the cause and then go to work in there. Now, not as a medical doctor, but as a servant of Christ, I know the cause. Sin. What is sin? Brother Branham, I don't sin. Unbelief is sin. He that believeth not is condemned already. Unbelief is the only sin there is. He that believeth not is condemned. You lying, stealing, committing adultery, that's not sin. That's the attributes of unbelief. That's right. Attributes of unbelief. If you believed, you wouldn't do those things. Now, the Holy Spirit promised to come in the last days and show to the Gentile race that he was Messiah, that it would be God was above us in the fatherhood, God with us in the sonship, now God the Holy Ghost in us. You know that. A little while in the world sits no more, yet you shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the consummation. You'll be there all, how long? To the end. The world ends. He'll still be there. In you. God in you. Now, if the Holy Spirit, if this is the Holy Spirit, this angel of God that they t science took the picture of, hangs in Washington, D.C., copyrighted, the only supernatural being that was ever photographed, I say to you in Christ's name, it ain't two feet from where I'm standing right now. That's right. That's right. That's the reason I'm saying what I'm saying. He's here. There is a person I'm looking at in this building that I know. Yes, I do. I know this... Um, 
Brother Ed Dalton, this Baptist preacher brother, sitting right over here from up in Kentucky, and them two boys sitting by him. Outside of that, I don't see one soul that I know. How many here are sick and needs Christ for your healing, physical, or for some loved one or something that you need of Christ? And you know I don't know you, know not what you're wanting. Raise up your hand. Just have faith. Then, in your faith, believe God with all your heart. Now, be real reverent. And then, I just take your time. Don't be nervous. Then, when you do believe that, and I'll quote a scripture out of the book of Hebrews. As soon as I make this quotation, Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior, was on his road to raise up a little dead girl of a priest. And there was a woman who had a blood issue. She had tried to be healed through the physicians, and they had tried hard to heal the woman, but they couldn't do it. She had an issue of blood, perhaps menopause or something, and couldn't stop. Now, I can see the little pale thing she said within her heart. If I can only touch that man's garment, I'll be made whole. Do you remember the story? And she touched his garment, and he said, Who touched me? And Peter rebuked him, saying, Everybody's touching you. Why'd you say such a thing? He said, But I got weak. Virtue's gone from me. Strength. Now, you say, Oh, I'm sick tonight, Brother Branham. If Jesus is here, I'd touch him right now. Would you do it? Sure you would. All right? I want to tell you he's here. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see. Now, if he, if he was standing here wearing this suit that he gave me, if you'd walk up and say, Lord Jesus, will you heal me? He'd say, I've already done it. Do you believe? That's for, according to your faith, be it unto you, he said. It's already finished when he died at Calvary. But he can make himself present here to show that he is alive and not dead. He promised that. That's our consolation. Aren't you happy in these dark hours when the world or, uh, nobody knows what to do, yet we know where we're standing? We know. See, He's here. We believe Him. Here He is in scientific proof that He's here by their pictures and things. The church and the millions around the world sees His power, see it working. And there's, remember, there's something great that's fixing to happen. It ain't the hour yet. Something will take place and you'll know one of these days. For long now. Don't let it be too late. You remember, a lot of times these things pass over when you don't know it. The Catholic Church didn't know when they burnt Joan of Arc for a witch that she was a saint. Didn't know St. Patrick the same way. They didn't know Jesus as the Son of God till he was dead, buried, and rose again. They realized what they'd done. Don't turn this Holy Spirit away, for someday you'll realize what you've done. Don't let it be like that. Now, he's here. And the Bible says, if you want to touch him, Hebrews, any of the clergymen around knows this, the Bible says that he is right now a high priest, sitting at the right hand of the majesty of God, that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Is that right? Does Hebrews 13, 8 say he's the same yesterday and forever? If he's the same high priest, if you touched him, he'd act the same way. Is that right? Same thing he did down there and that woman touched him? He'd do the same thing because he promised he would do it according to what he did there when he's talking to Abraham. If you believe it with all your heart, may the Holy Spirit come by divine gift, not nothing within myself, just like this microphone. It's a mute, unless it's a dumb mute without something making a noise on this side of it. So am I a dumb mute without something speaking through me. I don't know you. You touch him. And when you do that, you set something afire that sends the Holy Spirit down. If I can release myself and humble myself to get my own thoughts out of the way, your faith in God will turn him around and he'll use his Holy Spirit in me to do the same thing he did to the woman that touched his garment. You won't have to have your prayer card and come up here because you haven't any prayer cards anyhow. We're going to give them out tomorrow. Just have faith. Now listen, don't no one... Disturb, make any noise, just believe and pray now for a moment. As a term of back, see if we're at the end of the road.
God, it's to your honor and glory we ask. Almighty and all faithful God, who keeps thy word in every generation, never failing, but always there to prove yourself alive. One day coming home from the resurrection, many did not believe on you, and there was one named Cleopas, and his friend was on the road down to Emmaus. And when they walked with you all day, and you talked with them, yet they did not recognize you until you got them in the room. Shut in. There's many here tonight, Lord, who's walked with you through the years, and still they don't realize the, how you kept them from accidents and the different things that's happened. Let them be alive to be here tonight. And while we're shut in, like Cleopas and his friend was, do something like you did then. When you did something just like you did it before you were crucified, they know that you were the same Jesus. For no one done it that way but you. And they run quickly and told others, Truly the Lord has risen. Now, Father, do tonight in this audience like you did in the days when you were here on earth because it's just exactly with your promise. Speak, O God, while we humble ourselves and submit our lives into thy hand. If you'll only do it once, Lord, once more, then the people here will be asked for a reason why they didn't follow the prescription of the Bible. For they see that truly God is working through his church and through his people. May I humbly ask this, our kind, loving Savior, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask him. Amen. All right, you raise your head. I'm looking right down this way at a woman who's got her head up praying. I do not know her. I've never seen her in my life. But right over hangs that light, the pillar of fire. And I'm watching it as it's moving. The woman was praying for me to turn and call her. And she suffering with a rectal trouble. If you believe with all your heart, you may be healed. A little lady is from, she might know who it is, she's from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Stand up to your feet, little lady, with a little shawl on your back there. Your erectile trouble has left you. Hemorrhoids, by name. Now, I solemnly hold my hands. I've never seen a woman in my life to know. I sh you don't have a prayer card, do you? Because there's no prayer cards. I do not know you. Is that true? We're strangers. Raise up your hand so the people might see. I never... Is what he told you, was it the truth? Wave your hand if it's the truth. I want to ask the audience something. Who did the woman touch? She raises her hand. She's never saw me and I've never saw her. And yet the Spirit of God is here to go back to her, the same one she had faith like the woman that touched the hem of his garment. She never touched me. Look how far she is from me. She touched the high priest. That proves that he's here. The lady sitting right behind there on the end a little feathered hat. She's praying too. Do you believe me to be his prophet? You're suffering in the back from an accident, wreck. That is right. Besides that, you have arthritis. That's correct. Complications. You have a loved one that you're praying for. 
a son, nervous break. You have a husband you're praying for. He's an alcoholic. That's thus saith the Lord God. Do you accept Jesus Christ now? If those things are true, raise up your hands so the people will see. If I do not know you and you don't know me, wave your hands. I know it. Do you believe with all your heart now? And go receive what you've asked for. And receive it. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If you believe, you have to believe first. See, now, see, the only way I'll ever know what I said to the woman is on the tape. That wasn't me talking. That was him. But there's something still hanging with the woman. She's wondering, oh, it's a, it's a, her, that, a, a boy, nervously. No, I, here it is. It's an evil spirit that caused the boy to have a breakdown, and it's on this fellow over here. He's just had a breakdown too. He's from Georgia. He's a minister. Reverend Farrell. Your breakdown is over, sir. Your nervousness is gone. Jesus Christ makes you well. Now to this to this man I never seen him in my life. We're totally strangers to one another. Ask him, was those things true, sir? Wave your hand if that's true. Ever what he told you was the truth. I do not know you. No, sir. Now, who sure that knows him? Christ. Is that right? Say, the man sitting by you there, also that you might believe and know that I am his servant, not me. You're praying for your wife, also from Georgia. Have a good courage. It'll be all right. If thou believes, if you can believe. Do you believe? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Little lady sitting here praying with a a spinal condition in the neck. Right over here. You're from Baton Rouge. Miss Hans, stand up. Receive your healing. I don't know the woman, never seen her in my life. We're total strangers. If we're strangers, wave your hand, sister, so that they'll know. You have faith and believe. There's that angel standing right back here. (laughs) See that light? Can't you see that? It's a woman's got a spiritual problem. Mrs. Haynes, her name. Miss Haynes, you believe with all your heart. He'll be all right. Accept it now? I don't know you. I've never seen you. A lady sitting by you there praying also. She has a bowel trouble. You believe God can tell me who you are, lady? Miss Jackson, you believe with all your heart. I challenge your faith. Here. If you people up in the audience back there in the back can hear me, you colored people, raise up your hands. Way up. Third from the end, I hear that colored lady suffering with a kidney trouble. The one sitting next to her suffering with kidney trouble also. You accept your healing? Raise up your hands if you accept your healing. All right? Go home. Christ makes you well. Have faith and believe. Don't doubt. God is here. You people know chairs and things. I can't heal you. I, you, I know what, I can tell you what's wrong with you. If you'll believe it.
spastic polio right in your back. If you believe with all your heart, you can move your chair and go home and be well, if you believe it. But you have to believe it with all your heart. Who is this laying here on a cot? That man? Yes. That's caused from an operation. Running blind. It's true. A tumor operation on the brain. Paralyzed him, made him in that condition. I can't heal. But the Holy Spirit is here. Do you believe the angel of the Lord is in the midst of the people? Do you accept him as your healer? Our Heavenly Father, as I ask these people to lay their hands on each other and pray, I ask that you'll confirm your word further to say this. You said these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. I pray thee, Father, just now, while your divine presence is with us, may each and every person that's in divine presence, as I feel myself weakening, may you, Father, heal every one of them. Let them know that it is thee. Be not afraid, it is I, saith the Holy Spirit. The only resource of help in the time of trouble. Come, everyone. Receive the bomb of Gilead. Be inoculated from all fears and doubts. Receive the Lord as your healer and Savior. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. I charge every man in here and every woman, boy and girl, in the name of Jesus Christ, whose presence is here, that knows that no mortal man could do these things on earth. It's right. It's absolutely got to be the Spirit of God, and I charge any clergyman to deny that the Bible doesn't promise this will happen just before the end time. See? And the Bible is fulfilled tonight. Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, the one you call the third person is the same person that's in our midst now working in our flesh as, he, as God worked in the flesh of His own Son, Jesus Christ, is working in the flesh of adopted children through Jesus Christ as He promised. A little while in the unbeliever will see me no more, not to the end of the world, but ye shall see me, for I'll be with you even to the end of the world. Here He is tonight. I wonder tonight, in the presence of this great Holy One, how many of you would like to have the prescription set over you? Would you like to come and accept Him as your Savior? Rise and go downstairs with us and be baptized. Would you do it while we sing a song, if you will? I love Him. I wonder if you'll rise and come up here and stand where I can pray and lay hands on you that you might receive the Holy Ghost. That's how you receive the Holy Ghost is by laying on of hands. The Bible says that. Are you aware that Christ is here? Raise your hand. What does hinder us? Philip said to the eunuch. What, or the eunuch said to Philip, rather, what hinders us here is water. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the one that you see working here. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to them it's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Follow that correctly and find out what takes place. That's what I did, and that's what took place. You do it, and it'll take place with you. I, with our heads bowed now, I, great Holy Spirit, your presence is here healing all over the building. Now may those, Lord, who are without you, that doesn't know what this great Holy Spirit means, doesn't know even the forgiveness of their sins, may they come forward now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Won't you rise now and come here in the presence? God's going to ask you at the day of judgment. I appeared in Shreveport on that Saturday night. I preached the Word to a uneducated person. I preached my word. I showed myself alive to confirm my word. And you'll be asked to give a reason why didn't you accept it. God bless you, my brother. Come right here. God bless you, my sister. 
someone else, a, if a person has never been baptized yet in Christian baptism, there's no other farmer in the Bible, no place at all. If you are a sinner, come forward. If you're a church member, come forward. If you've never been baptized by the prescription that Peter laid out in Acts 2.38, I charge you before God and the angels. Why is it you will doubt me as a prophet when I stand here and tell you the truth and know that the prophet has the word of the Lord? That's his divine office. I tell you the truth. I ask in Jesus Christ's name that everyone without water baptism, you've been sprinkled or whatever way, come and be reconciled to God. Follow the prescription. Upon this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell will never prevail against it. I love Him. Rise to your feet now and come, will you? I love Won't you? Because He first loved me and first Come now. Why? Why are you not coming? Why? Say, my church believes in sprinkling. My church believes something else. I'm asking you why by the prescription that God gave. There's not another prescription in the Bible contrary to it. If there's anybody can show me a prescription contrary to that for salvation, come do it. It's not there. That's God's prescription. Why will you not... Is there anyone here that has followed God in this order? Raise your hands. How many here has followed God in this order? Maybe all of you have. If you haven't, then you're going to be asked at the judgment. Remember, the same God that is up on me, the same Spirit telling me to ask this and to make this challenge says to me now, He'll ask you at the judgment which you may come before morning, why didn't you do it? Thus saith the Lord. We can't play church no more. God's in our midst. You feel that terrible awe? Are you aware of what that is? It's the Holy Spirit calling, moving, Trying to move in once more so I'll be sure that no blood will be upon my hands at the day of judgment. Remember, I charge you before God. Come. I, I love you.
Right up, each one now, right up here. So, yes, sister. Our heavenly Father, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, may our sister receive the Holy Ghost. As Peter went down and prayed for them and laid hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came on them. I pray that while she receives her water baptism, may the Holy Ghost come upon her. I pray in Jesus' name. Would you come forward now? Just stand real lovely and quiet. Just a moment. All right. Heavenly Father, is this strong-looking young fellow stand here? Oh, God. May the water covers him. May the Holy Spirit fill him. May he be used for your glory, Lord. It's your promise. In Jesus' name. Thank you, man. Have I missed one? Someone laying hands on them? That's a promise. Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's the prescription. Is there another before we offer this prayer and go to the pool? That's never been baptized. Another. Under the unction and conviction of the presence of the Holy Spirit, man comes to the bow of his heart. As he receives the water baptism, may he be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of O God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life and giver of every good gift, send thy blessing upon my sister. May she receive this blessed Holy Spirit as she goes to the water. Yes. So obey your commandments. Through Jesus Christ I ask it. Amen. Oh, what a solemn moment. The, the awe of the Holy Spirit. It just seems like somebody's grieving it. I don't know. Maybe it's me. See, because I, I trust it's not because I made an awful statement just a few moments ago not knowing, I even heard myself say it, charge this audience before Jesus Christ that they'll answer why at that day. No excuse, see, because He's done manifested Himself by His Word, through His Word, in His people, and He's here. Show me anywhere else. Is that all now? Another? Or oh, come to the here. Yes. No teenager. That's your distracted state. I'm so glad to know that you turned to Christ. Remind him all in the Lord. Oh, Lord God. Did him not let you go?
wait was worthwhile. I pray that you'll bless my sister now. Fill her with the Holy Spirit as she's obeying you, coming down. She wants to be inoculated from the fears and cares of life. May the Holy Spirit, the great serum of God, that takes away sin, may come into her life and guide her throughout her journey. Through Jesus' name. Just remain right there just a moment. Is that finished? Everyone now? Remember, everyone feels now that... Just think of it, friend. I'm sure if we could have just had some kind of a something we could pinch with our hands and realize what's taking place here now. We're, we're unaware of it. I, I say these things maybe in riddles to you. Maybe you, you do not understand it. But if you, I could only let you have what I, uh, I know now, what I feel now, I know what's present. A great hour of decision. This church has come to its hour. It come to its Mount Transfiguration in this fellowship. Things just took place that wasn't even ever thought of, but was prophesied a long time ago would take place. This is the hour of decision for many. I'm so happy that these come. Think of it. The great Holy Spirit of God that met Father Abraham out there has come down into our midst working in mortal lives, each one of us walking through this building, just exactly what He said He would do. We see the great meetings and conferences that were spoke of 2,500 years ago just take place a week or two ago. We see the atomic age. I was quoting last night a prophecy that was given me back in 1933 of seven things that take place. Germany, the Sig... Siegfried Line and the president election and all these other things, five of them has already taken place. Two left, the coming of the control of a woman in the United States to take over maybe a church to take over to rule. Watch it, thus saith the Lord. And then I see him create an automobile that didn't need a stirring wheel in it. I've seen that Maginot line, it was, instead of the Siegfried, the Maginot line, 11 years, and told the people it's wrote on paper. He's never one time I charge any person in divine presence or in the world to ever tell me one time that the Holy Spirit ever spoke and said these things that it didn't come to pass. That's right. Oh, what an hour that we're living in. What a moment right now. A hush like a death somewhere. See now, uh, is there another, is there someone else that would like to come at this moment, would like to walk up here and say, I have never received the Holy Ghost, Brother Branham. I, I, I'm a church member. I've never been baptized in Christian baptism. I've been sprinkled or poured or what more. But I, I want to come according to the way the Bible tells me. I'm not ashamed. I, I, I want Christ. I'm coming right now. I'm just going to say one more time we'll sing and remember then. Till tomorrow morning then. Then we'll take these audience here right downstairs. I think everything's ready and the baptistry is filled and we're ready to go into baptism. Just Here's one more person. God bless you, sister. I like to lay hands on the people because the Bible forbids it. Look, Heavenly Father, may she receive the blessings of God Walking down now to something that is thus saith the Lord. Give her, Lord, this satisfaction, this inoculation that we spoke of it in that way, Father. I pray in Jesus' name. And early. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that.